both Leo III and Constantine V can be considered near great emperors. And generally speaking, in any dynasty, once you have a couple of really good emperors in a row, it's time for a bad one. However, Leo IV is something of an exception. Now, while there's a reason why he's not nearly as well remembered as his father and grandfather, it has nothing to do with his ability and everything to do with his ill health and premature death. So, that's why I consider Leo's reign to be something of the epilogue to Constantine V's reign. So, let's take a look at the life and career of Leo IV the Khazar. Let's take a look at Leo IV's early life. Leo was born in 750, and he was the eldest son of Constantine V, but by no means the only son, as we've already seen. Leo's mother was Constantine's first wife. She was a Khazar princess, originally named Tzitzik, but she had taken on the Greek name of Irene. And coincidentally, um, Irene of Athens would be Leo IV's wife. In 775, when he succeeded his father and became the emperor, Leo was 25 years old, but he already seems to have already had tuberculosis, which is what most people think ultimately caused his death in 780. So even coming into the throne, he was a bit of a marked man, and because of his illness, there were a few people who had designs on the throne. One of the biggest reasons why Leo IV tends to get neglected is the simple fact that we actually don't know all that much about his reign. We do, however, know the broad outline of a few of his military campaigns, the best known of which occurred in 778. That year, Leo IV oversaw a massive invasion of Abbasid Syria. He and his generals won several victories, and they were able to carry away a lot of plunder. Um, after that campaign, when they returned home, there was a parade in Constantinople. It may have been something like a triumph, if that was still an institution that was practiced. Um, there was also a resettlement of Jacobite Christians who uh, lived in Syria, and they were forcibly resettled to Thrace. So Leo IV was continuing the long-standing policy of population resettlement. And this is especially important because the Byzantines are still struggling to really establish a permanent foothold in the Balkans. Or at least to expand it. They've had one forever, but, you know, it's taking them a long time to recover from the uh, Slavic migration. In 7079, the Abbasids launched a retaliatory strike into Asia Minor, but they were defeated by Leo and his generals. So that was another substantial victory. Now in 780, Leo IV was leading a campaign against the Bulgarians, um, something that his father had done, and just like his father, he ended up dying while on that campaign, um, and his death occurred in the month of September, um, and it was from a fever, but most people assume that this fever was ultimately caused by his tuberculosis, or at least exacerbated by it, and that uh, this is when the disease finally claimed his life. In 730, Leo III the Isaurian had instituted iconoclasm, banning the use of icons in religious worship, and then Constantine V later had extended that into a full-fledged persecution starting around 754 or so. And Leo IV will inherit the situation where he has a policy that some people agree with, other people don't, and then there are also a whole lot of people who are uncomfortable with the persecution of people who are iconoduls. So Leo IV is more or less a moderate iconoclast. He is his father's son in the sense that he does not believe in the use of icons and he might see it as idolatrous or something of that nature. However, he doesn't believe in persecuting people and possibly the reason why he is not comfortable with persecution is because his own wife, Irene of Athens, was an iconodule. Um, so a lot of people have seen, because we know that Irene was a very strong personality and that she was a tireless worker on behalf of the Iconodule cause, that she was the key factor in Leo IV ending the persecution. However, from the other evidence we have, uh, namely Leo's success as a general, it seems that he definitely had his own mind and his own will, and that he would not have been someone who would cave easily to pressure. So... I would say that she was not all that key to Leo's policy changes, 
but that she probably was a factor. Anyway, um, I think a lot of times also because of the shortness of Leo's reign, a lot of people assume that he must not have been all that strong of an emperor. But if you look at his uh, military achievements, as we talked about a little earlier, I think that there's really no reason to think that he wasn't in full command when he was on the throne. When you have a generally healthy and successful emperor, say someone like a Constantine V, the most important family member is usually their son and heir. However, when you have someone who is successful but unhealthy and clearly not going to last for a long time, many other relatives become important as they start to see themselves as part of a possible succession. So let's talk about Leo IV's most important relatives, people who will play a major role in Byzantine politics for the next 20 plus years. First and foremost among these is his wife Irene, pictured here. Irene was an ambitious and beautiful woman who came from Athens, and it's probable that she was selected as his wife for her beauty. Certainly it seems that Constantine V most likely did not know that she was an iconodul when he allowed Leo to marry her. At least I wouldn't think so given how strident Constantine was about icons. Um, Leo had a son named Constantine the Ninth, who was nine years old when he died in 780. Um, Constantine the Sixth will be the official heir to Leo the Fourth, although we'll see that his reign also doesn't quite turn out the way that one would expect. Leo the Fourth had two younger brothers, Nicephorus and Christopher, and both of them had imperial ambitions since they were in their twenties when Leo died and um, they had known that Leo was not long for this world ever since he had assumed the throne, and they thought, you know, they had a pretty good chance of going on to succeed their father. Um, it seems that there were people within the state, mostly soldiers, who also agreed that Nicephorus or Christopher could possibly be emperor, and they will cause problems for the government of Constantine and Irene. So between these four Asaurian dynasts, uh, they will really have an impact on history, and three of them, Irene, Nicephorus, and Christopher, most likely would not have really been all that important for subsequent history had Leo IV lived a normal lifespan if he had managed to make it into his 50s like his grandfather and father. Um, and if that had happened, maybe the only person we would actually know about would be Constantine VI, or maybe we would remember Irene as just being a very attractive empress who was an advocate for the use of icons. So what is the legacy of Leo IV? First of all, I think that we need to exercise a great deal of caution when we look at the relationship between Leo and his wife Irene. A lot of people, because of how prominent Irene became later, and because of the obvious strength of her personality, her intelligence, her ambition, all that stuff, they assume that she dominated her husband the same way that she dominated her son. However, there's really no reason to assume that. We know that Leo IV is someone who um, was able to campaign and do so successfully. Um, he had some experience by the time he took over for his father. There is no reason to believe that he was anyone's puppet, and had he been fully healthy, there's no reason to believe that he would have been any less great than Leo III or Constantine V. So, one thing that I would say about Leo IV that's pretty significant is that he's the last effective and fully legitimate Asaurian Emperor. Constantine VI is fully legitimate, but he was a little bit of an idiot. Irene is effective in many ways in terms of being able to hold on to power, but because she doesn't have much legitimacy after certain events that we'll get to involving the way she treats her son, um she's never fully accepted and most people tolerate her rather than truly following her. So really the Asarian dynasty in its days are numbered once Leo IV dies in September of 780. Um, another factor that helped to undermine uh, the regency of Constantine under Irene is that when Leo had had a confrontation with his brothers Nicephorus and Christopher he had decided to opt for mercy by not executing them. 
and this will cause long-term instability as the two of them continue to be focal points for opposition to what is perceived as Irene's rule and eventually becomes just that. It looks like the Empire is, or at least was, on a path toward internal peace and external revival um, under Leo III, Const uh, Constantine V, and Leo IV, and that that path was badly interrupted by Leo's death and the subsequent turmoil and dynastic succession issues that ensued. 